welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to color this. I love the Rebel combinations. And in this one, it's really Rebel. We're going YG99 all the way to R89. If you had not seen the All About YG99, I'm gonna put a link in the description box and a link over here so you can see it. And then follow me in the video so you can color this with us. I'm Elena with violetainc.com and we sell Copic markers, refills, nibs, and Prismacolor pencils. Thank you. So, we are gonna start with our 85. We are underpainting first. Well, this little part. This is gonna be a long video. Go get your drink, Diet Coke, tea. I never drink tea, but I do drink coffee and Diet Coke and Diet Sprite. Anyway, we're underpainting. I started with R85. Now on top of it, I'm gonna be using YG99. I have decided that this piece of the image is going to be all green. So I'm not gonna be using any of the Rebel combination. This is YG95. So what I used was R85, YG99, YG97, and we ended with YG95. Now we're going to do another one. Same process. We're going to underpaint. What looks that should be under something else? What should be shaded or shadowed? That was R85 on top of it. We need to make sure that YG99 is covering all of R85. This is YG97. And we're gonna finish with YG95. Going kinda slow because these are small pieces. I'm afraid to flick away too much. And this is YG95. Now I'm gonna do this tiny not the tiny, I'm sorry, this other piece, again, where is coming from the center of the image, all the going up, that is going to look like a shadow. And that is why I'm underpainting there. Now this is YG99. There is no hurry. You don't need to run because it's just a longer piece. As long as you go af on top of it, right after, you'll be fine. Now we're going to be using YG97. And YG95. Now, I believe, let me see, let me see. Yes, this is where we're going to start doing the Rebel combination. It's a small piece. So I am thinking that it's not going to have a lot of the red. It's going to have just a little bit. So we're just going to do a little bit of it. That was R89. I'm going on top of it with R85, the same marker that we used to underpaint. We are flicking away from the little fence that I built towards where we started coloring with the YG99. And 
and that is it don't go back don't try again don't be flicking don't i'm like oh my god am i gonna do it no i'm doing the outer the outer piece or side edge this is only yg95 it's solid yg95 and i'm gonna do it with the other little pieces too all of them are gonna have the same yg95 at the end slowly i printed this image this image is from power puppy i printed it in cry cryogent paper and um, I will say 60% uh, hmm, gray. So it's not completely black the way you get the image. Now we're going to underpaint this other one right here on the edge, on the corner. It looks like it's under two of the other pieces. Flicking away, being very careful. On top of it, we have YG99. Making sure that all of our 85 is covered by YG99. I am using our 85 to underpaint YG99, not YG97. That's why we need to make sure that it is all covered because if you wait, you leave a little bit more of the R85 for a 97 to cover it, it might not. So you will be able to see the flicks. And that is not what we are trying to accomplish this time. That was YG97. This is YG95. And we are leaving a tiny little space to do the Rebel combination on the tip. This is R85, 89, sorry. R85 and then R83 so let's oh what am I doing oh yes I'm doing the other the space outside YG95 it looks kind of weird it does once I'm looking at it I'm like kind of weird but no so let's do one more and then I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because as you can see it's a lot of them a lot of pieces and I don't want you to be here for an hour and a half so this is R85 flicking away from the edge I am building a fence right here and flicking away from it. The fence is so our lines are crisp, clean. I'm building a fence with YG99. And then I'm gonna go on top of it with YG99 again, flicking away from it. So you and at the end you are not gonna be able to see the fence. Building another fence. And the way you see I move the paper, this is how I color every single time. When I'm doing the all abouts, you don't see me moving the paper, but that is so you don't get confused or DC because I'm moving it so much. But if I'm gonna show you how I color, well, then I need to show you how I color. And this is how I color. That was YG97. And this is YG95. We are always flicking 
away from the center now we're going to be doing the rebel combination this is R89 we are flicking away from the opposite side that means that we're flicking towards the center this is R85 and this is R83 I am flicking longer and a little bit slower okay let's do one more so we can talk about the speed okay so now a solid line of YG 95 and we're gonna start talking about the speed so I usually say it's four markers because I underpaint like this one R85 and this is well after you do your make your fence this is the fastest that you are going to be flicking. Let's go. This is the fastest. That means that the marker is not going to be touching the paper as long. And your flicks are going to be thick in the beginning and then lifting off at the end. This is YG99, the darkest of your markers. The first one was the underpainting marker. This is the darkest. And we're going to start flicking away a little bit slower. Not too much of a difference, but it is a little bit different because we need enough ink for the chemical reaction to happen and start blending. The idea of underpainting is to give it another look, to give it the shaded look, not to have more markers showing. This is YG97, which is going to be our medium marker, and it is at a medium speed. This is the slowest. This is YG95 in the lightest. Now, it's supposed to be slow, but I am swishing with this marker right now. I am not flicking away. If I was flicking away, I would be going slower. Now we're going to do the same thing, R85 in the corner, I mean in the edge. Now flick away from it. This is going to be our darkest. We're not underpainting on this side. So that means that this is the fastest. This is the medium speed. This is R85. The next one is R83, is the slowest, the one I push the most, is the one that I have to change nibs more often. That's slow. And this will help the blend to happen. So now this is going to go fast. Why? So you don't have to be just looking at me all this time. We are, we underpainted. This is YG99, YG97, and YG95. Underpainting, and it looks like I color so well when it's this fast. Yep, it does look like I color really well. Underpainting. If you do not have R85, you can always go and look for other reds. I am working on a video where I show you how I choose the underpainting colors. Um, if you have any questions, please put it in the description box so I'll know and I can add it to all the questions that are going to be answering on that video. And there we go again. Well, with this, 
artichoke, you're going to have a lot of times to be able to practice this. I think if you purchase this uh, image, you get a few others that are the same kind of plant. So you'll be able to practice a lot if you purchase it and then you just uh, color them. This is from Power Puppy. I think they also have some new images just released a couple of weeks ago. We're underpainting, going really fast. This should be released in November. I think it will be, let me check, November what? Just to make sure that you do get uh, that November 20th, no, November 19th. On the 17th, we have a big sale. It's going to be over Black Friday, but it's way before Black Friday. Um, and we're going to have 10% off everything on the website. So go check it out. I will give you the discount code on the description box. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We underpaint. Then we go on top with YG99, YG97, YG95. The bonus combination that we are using here is the one that we use in YG99, which is R85, R89, I'm sorry, R89, R85, and R83. After somebody asked me how often I change my nibs now my nibs it, it depends on how much i use and if i'm using it for my darkest or my lightest color if it's the lightest color i will say i change them more often because i push more towards the paper um i can't tell for how long or time wise because i color more than a lot of other people um, but I might not even use some of them. So it's very different than anybody else. Uh, but when they bend and they stay bended, it's time to change it. Um, and when do I refill? What I do is every time that I color something about this size, and actually every time I, every time I color, period, I weight my markers and if they are under 14 grams then I refill them if they're not then I just put them back where they belong I know that with a image this large I'm using a lot of ink I might need to um, refill them I am not very sure just because I Typically do not use YG99 and it may have been that it was already like 14.6 like when I purchased it um, Which is usually what you get when you purchase a new marker And it's a sketch marker. It is about 14.6 14.4 There are some weird markers like B79 that Mine right now is at 13 and it is so juicy that I'm afraid to add more ink because it's going to then be dripping everywhere. I do need to refill it, but I will. Uh, so what I do is every time I color, I don't go and do this every single time. I don't go and refill every single time. Uh, but I put them aside. And on the weekend, when I'm watching TV or something, that's when I start measuring. And if, I, if they need to be refilled, I do refill them. So at the end of the month, I don't have, I don't know, 50 markers that I need to refill. And then it becomes a big job. And I don't like big jobs. I like small, quick, fast jobs. Anyway, so as you see, the, the pieces of this image are starting to get bigger. So my flicks are going to be longer. 
and that's where I shine. I shine in long flicks, not in small ones. Um, but with all the details that we're putting on this image, it doesn't matter if your flakes are not perfect. They will look good. Your, your coloring is going to look done. Kind of like when you put on makeup and you look done. Not like when you just wake up and you're all, you look crazy. So that's the difference. You, we are adding so many little details to this image that is going to look professionally colored. And what I recommend is scan it, scan this, and then print it for your images. You don't have to color every single one if you um, are going to be making them into cards or something. Uh, just print it. Anyway, remember that alcohol markers are going to fade. They are alcohol. Alcohol is going to evaporate. So the first thing I do when I color something is I leave it outside for a day. Next day, I scan it. So what you see, well, not here because this is what I'm coloring, but what you see in the graphics, those are scanned images. I used to just take a picture and, and upload them, but they don't look the same. The colors don't look the same. And if I want to make them really, really large, they don't look well. So I started scanning them. Pretty much all printers that have a copier will have that now. So it's just easy to do it. We're almost done with all of these little pieces. Okay, so let's do this last one on repainting with R85. On top of it, we're using YG99 and then YG97. YG95, very little. And then we're going to do the Rebel combination with R85. No es cierto, es R89, R85, and R83. Okay, last one. We're underpainting. I only underpainted that little part. We're using YR, YG99. I don't know why I want to say YR. This is YG99. 97, 95. Now we're going on the other side with R89, R85, and R83. And we're doing the outer part. So this is indigo blue Prismacolor pencils. This, what you just saw, is called pushing. I am pushing away the little pieces that I think that should be far away from us. I went to sharpen it because I want it very, very sharp. And this is Prismacolor pencil, indigo blue. And I'm going to be doing this throughout the image. Little pieces separating. This part should be coming from the center, so I feel that it should be far from us. This is another little piece. I'm going very lightly. I don't want to overpower the image, but I do want it to be noticeable. I want it to look as if that little part right there is far away from us. Now this little part, when I color, the first thing I do is I look at the image for a long time. Yes, I look like a dork, but this is how I'm going to understand the image. I'm going to understand every single petal, which at the end, I see these as petals. 
This is, imagine you're coloring a flower. This is gonna be really under. Everywhere that you underpaint it, that's gonna be a really good candidate to use this color pencil. Very, very sharp color pencil. And right there. You don't have to use blue indigo in every single part that you underpaint it. Um, actually, you shouldn't because you want it to look different. You want different stages of underpainting. Like right here, you saw that I underpaint, you, I pushed it in one side more than the other. Because we don't know, it might be tilting and that part is gonna be far more, farther away from us. I heard someone says, I am pushing all my L's and V's. I really don't remember who it was. Mm, I don't. I would love to give her credit for this. Uh, underpainting actually is from Amy Schulke. She's the one that started underpainting with Copic markers. Um, and then she started doing this. I haven't seen anybody else doing it. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but I haven't taken too many classes. But this is where I learned it from, from Amy, Sch Amy Schulke from uh, Violet. <laughs> She's not from Violet, I think. She's from Vanilla Arts. This little part, another V. And then just start looking, what is it? Where can I push more? Where would it look better? Now you start to see the dimension that this is adding to the image. This is where I spent most of my time doing. <laughs> I love to underpaint, overpaint, pull and push. You know how I underpaint. This is called overpainting and pushing, whichever of the two. And again, going very careful. This is a transparent color pencil. So you, you will see as blue, of course, I'm using it in a very dark, with a very dark marker, which is YG99, and it is underpainted, so it's darker than regular YG99. So I am not gonna go back and change the color. You know, add another green on top, no. Okay, now this is um, dark purple, also from Prismacolor Pencils. You see that I'm using it again, on top of indigo blue. Why? When you use indigo blue and dark purple, they are going to um, create a pseudo black. That means it's gonna be darker still. So I am gonna use dark purple in little parts, way less than I used indigo. It's like I told you before, we're gonna do it in stages. So we underpaint it, that is one layer. We paint it, that's another layer. We are pushing a lot with indigo, that's another layer. And then we're gonna push a little bit more in little spaces with dark purple. That's my last layer of pushing. In a little bit, you're gonna see how we pull pieces. So now they look as if they are closer to us. And again, this is why I say scan your image. Because imagine doing this for 
all of your images that you're gonna make cards or something unless this is for somebody that is like super duper special then okay okay and like i said we use uh, dark purple not as much as indigo and now we're gonna start pulling these little pieces i feel that they are like round on top of the main piece so they should look as if they are closer to us i am not giving it a full coat just a little bit on the sides to make it look round don't color them all the same you know this is an organic um, piece an organic bean um, it's a botanical so it's all gonna be different you have never seen two leaves that look exactly the same it's gonna be the same with this so use your pencils a little bit here a little bit there maybe this one is making a weird turn and it looks a little bit more lighter it looks lighter it looks closer to us that's how you make it unique so that's exactly what i'm doing here i'm coloring little pieces here and there the ones that i think will look closer I love especially using this, uh, this is cream. The color is cream, also from Prismacolor. Um, closer to a darker space. So it's gonna give me the that close and far. And according to me, it looks realistic. Same thing. In some parts, I push more because I want more color. In others, I'm just really not giving a very light push. And this one, you see that the piece is kind of like crooked. So it looks really detailed when you add the cream pencil. make sure you add a little bit of pencil to every single little piece not just some to every piece has to have some pencil if not it's gonna look like they're not from the same plant they're not from the same species so that's what we're trying to do and then um, we are going to pull a little bit more i'll show you how So I think that's it for the cream. And then I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of pushing in this part of the pieces. You see how now it's giving it a little bit. I can I could keep going and going and going with the pencils. I there is a point when I have to ask myself, is this piece done have i done everything i want and can you replicate it because i am if i'm coloring here for you so you can see how i do it i would like for you to be able to get results that are similar to mine um so what i do is i use a lot of small techniques not small but simple techniques that you can replicate it's tedious sometimes because it's a long time but it's great for practice this is how i learned i would print an image and then i would color the same image many many times until i couldn't get it wrong um and i don't know if that's how you learn but if you do you're in the right channel then because this is how i show you how i color so here I wouldn't say I'm underpainting much. I am pushing, uh, and it is underpainting, but it's more like giving details uh, sharper 
lines to the image. And maybe at this time I should probably have stopped so this video wouldn't be this long. But once I'm coloring, I forget that I'm videotaping because the camera is on top of me. I don't see it. Um, and I really, really enjoy using these pencils. I ordered this pencil by the dozen. This one, uh, so it's dark purple, indigo blue, cream, white, mm, gray lavender. We haven't used gray lavender in our series. I should probably use it. Hmm, stop. Elena, stop. No. No, Elena said, let's do a little bit more here. It's good. You don't need to do more. But every time I look at it, I can think, oh, I could do this part. Oh, if I add this, it will look better. And it does look better. <laughs> but, you know, there has to be a limit as to when. The good thing is this paper does have a lot of toot and accepts the pencil that I'm adding. It gives it a little bit more character when you spend this much time just adding details to it. And a little bit more details. And you know, I, I think I am adding more details here. Um, because when I added the cream, I could see that if the red, the part where we only color with the reds, was a little bit push, then the cream will look closer to us and that's gonna give it more dimension. But don't worry, I'm not gonna be coloring that like for the next three hours. It's just like one more minute or less. And then we're gonna push the last not the last push, the last pull that I'm going to use. This is a Sharpie water base and the color white. This is going to be not much as, well, it is a pull, but it's more like highlights. The highlights of this that you will see. So I'm trying to do, in a few, I'm going to have in both sides longer on one side than the other. And then of course, I always overdo it. I That's me, I'm extra. But um, you will love it. You, if you don't spend as much time, as, nobody should spend that much time as I do coloring. Um, but if you spend just a little bit of time using all of these techniques, you will give your coloring image way more details in contour, depth, dimension, color, that you will start falling in love with your coloring again. I just read an, a message on YouTube uh, from someone saying, I'm about to sell my markers. And I'm thinking, no, don't sell them. Uh, you just need to practice. Um, just practice. It will get better. If once you actually master coloring or blending, which is the main thing here, and if you still think I shouldn't have these markers, I have another friend that it's, she is a master at coloring with markers and with watercolor and with pastels and different things and she just doesn't use them much she likes them but she doesn't use much of her copics and she is really considering considering to sell them then okay but if you don't know how to use them yet if you're having trouble it's just a matter of practice i have no talent i have skills that's why i feel confident that you can learn because if I was able to learn the skills, you can learn the skills. I never colored when I was a child. I never colored when I was in my teens. I was never the artistic kind. 
So, if I can do it, I am sure you can do it. We are almost done. This was the highlights. You can add as many highlights as you like. Um, always remembering these highlights are only going to be in the places that are closest to us. Not none at all where you underpaint it. That's not where you will see highlights. And yes, of course, I'm looking for where to add more. Sorry, Amy. I do go crazy with this. Um, unfortunately, this marker has been discontinued. Uh, you can use the Posca markers too. They just have to be water-based um, and white. I have used them and they're pretty good. But when they discontinue this, I purchased like 40. So I will be using these ones for a while. And yes, I'm still looking for places where to put more color. Now, by now you have seen a few of these videos where I color and I tell you what I'm doing and all that. This is my final um, image. I hope you like it. Let me know if you like these videos. If you like them this long, should I make them shorter? Should I only show like three or four petals and then just let you finish it or just go really fast or what? Anyway, thank you for watching and we will see you next week. Bye.